my name is Luca Matic. And my name is Nikola Matic, and we are the owner of Matic Farms in Thompson, Ohio. That's my grandfather's farm. He had sheep and soybeans here, and we just started a three acre hop farm, and we'll be doing 30 acres next year. I had been working in a vineyard for a while and I've always been a huge craft beer fan and I knew the agricultural aspect of the whole craft beer movement was really missing. Uh, we did some more research and we saw it was possible to start a commercial hop farm in Ohio. Brewers have never had the ability to buy hops commercially from their own state before in Ohio and I think this will be a very interesting avenue for them to explore. A typical day really varies. Sometimes we're extremely busy uh, expanding our trellis. Sometimes we're trying to take care of the plants. Uh, the past two weeks we've been expanding our trellis. So what that entails is putting poles in the ground and then shoveling and tamping for about 12 hours. It is very difficult. Today. Then I usually just go down all the way that's a power I want it pull it out back up get so you get some nice filter for the shovel drop it right down I really want to educate people on the whole aspect of hop farming the state of Ohio and then more on the eastern half and allow people to understand what's actually going on and how this stuff is grown right now we're just gonna take this yellow pine drop it right here and we'll show you how we raise them in the poles uh, it's going to be courtesy of Nick Florip over at Empire Hops. This is how he raises his poles. We saw him do it, really liked it. It takes yeah. a lot less effort than how he used to do it, and it's also pretty quick. I didn't even know what a hop farm looked like and I loved craft beer. And just the fact that so many people just don't know about hop farms and what it looks like is crazy to me because it's such a beautiful art form, really. Mm. I mean, vineyards are, yeah. everybody knows what a vineyard looks like, but nobody knows what a hop farm looks like, barely. And you know, we want to provide them that opportunity to see that. And what you're seeing on this farm right now is first year growth. Uh, so in about four or five years from now, this will just be green walls. You won't be able to see anything else. Um, so Nick, if you want to talk about the sledge. So this is what we were using to tamp the poles and tamping the poles is what you do once you start filling the hole with dirt and you pack in the dirt so the pole doesn't move around and get off center. Um, after swinging around a sledge hammer in the rain, sunshine, just all day, uh, we got pretty sick of this pretty fast. So we nixed the sludge hammer and this is my masterpiece right here. Uh, this is the Matic Farms Tamper, uh, Matic Farms Engineering, manufactured in the United States. So this is basically just a little four by four and we stuck a pole in it That's and a two by four. we just smash it in the hole. Yeah, it's a two by four. And the bottom is a two by four. Guys. Yeah, two by four. And we smash it, smash the dirt in there with this. Much lighter. If you're doing it all day, it just 
saves so much wear on your body and allows you to get it done way faster. And you don't need to get on your knees like you would need to with the sledge. Yeah, the sledgehammer can't can't go far enough in the hole either. So right now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna center this bad boy. We're up. gonna center the bad boy up. Um, I'll be the I'll be the guy make sure it's centered, and Nick will be the guy telling me what I'm doing. So we'll get after it. Uh, right now what I like to do is try to put the bottom in the center of the hole. Good. All right, so he's good. Good horizontally. Now, you're gonna now he's going to check our drive row to make sure it's straight with everything else. Okay, top Ron's house. Top Fredo a little bit. Good. Fredo's our neighbor. Dog. That's good right there. Ron's our other neighbor. Yeah, Ron's a neighbor on that side. Code side words are a little easier to remember if you need to go left or right. So right now while I hold it with two hands, you're going to want to hold this thing as good as you can. Nick's gonna start shoveling in dirt. And you know, you just do this. As soon as I got some good base, I'll start kicking in dirt. Yeah, as soon as we know the pole's not gonna be moving around, then we can start tamping and throw right. more dirt in there. Now, Luke, I'll move to shoveling. I'll move the shovel. Nick will move the tamping. The most challenging thing for us is finding information. It's not just growing one or two hot plants, which you could find online how to do. But commercially, how do I do this effectively? Uh, how do I space out my finances? Where do I buy things? Uh, what happens when I get this disease? There's a lot of different variables and it's very difficult to find any information on anything when it comes to commercial farming. 90% of hop farming comes to shoveling dirt and tamping. This is what people do not see. Yeah, this is, we've had to do this over 1500 times. Yeah. So when you look at a hop farm, this is what I, or when I look at a hot farm, this is what I appreciate. So for the past month, uh, past three weeks, we've probably been doing that same thing. 7 a.m. to 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock every single night. You can see this thing going anywhere all day. You put all your weight on it. So if you want to start a commercial hot farm, A, you're going to need to hire someone to do that, or you're going to need to do that. And if you can't do that, then don't do it. Yeah, and you're going to need the equipment to do it efficiently and quick. It's time for some beers. say my favorite beer right now I'll give a shout out to Dan Weeson over at Empire Hop Farm I'm gonna go with the, the Bell's Brewery Two Hearted Ale that's probably my number one on tap right now how about you Luca? Um, I'm a platform fanboy uh, I would say every single platform small batch IPA series they're all very good <laughs> next few years we would really like to dial in our facilities here uh, we would like to really figure out what grows best in our soil and get all of our processes dialed down and we would also like to expand our hop farm in the future from 30 to anywhere from 100 to 200 acres I see the future of hop farming looking a lot like it does in Germany a lot of small family farms I think right now it's centralized um, I think a, a lot of things are going to change as far as climate and where it is gonna grow. I don't see it being grown out west for the next 50, 60 years. Um, I see a lot of it moving to the east coast and I see a lot of smaller farms like us, uh, probably 10 to 100 acre farms. And I think that'll be good for the consumer because there'll be a lot of competition. Um, and I think the more competition there is, uh, the better the, the, the product will be. 
Let me call these forks. Into there. And then we'll lock it up with chains so it can't go anywhere. I wake up every day because I have an opportunity to be a trailblazer in something that's never been done before in a state. No one's ever grown this commercially and I want to be, me and my brother would like to be the first ones to say we did and we want to set a stage for other people to do so as well. At the end of the day when you have two brothers running a business and they're co-owners, no one is going to care about the business like you two do. So just knowing that someone's there, it's not just you doing something and someone cares just as much if not more than you do. Uh, really gives you uh, a lot of support that you need trying to do something that no one has ever done before in this state. But also knowing you have somebody that you can count on and trust whenever you need anything done. Um, really being able to bounce off whatever ideas and trust that the other person will follow through on what he says. But yeah, a lot of frustration, a lot of yelling, but you know, also a lot of things getting done. Mm -hmm.